these sinister and lifeless waters may hold the secret of the wickedest cities on earth. One has to understand that nobody in the history of the world has ever touched the bottom of the Dead Sea. Forgotten by time, forsaken by God, are the Bible's cities of sin preserved in the salt of this acrid, chemical sea? We don't know what's out there. No one knows what's out there. In, in the seafloor that no one's ever been on before, we don't know what we're going to find. It, it could be anything. Two years ago, we were diving on a shipwreck, and I didn't think we'd find anything, and we found $5 million worth of gold. So, yeah, I, I'm not as much of a skeptic as I used to be. a journey into the depths of wickedness, into danger, myth, and evil. I'm scared. I mean, this is not something that I like to do, and I'm very apprehensive. Thousands of years after its people perished in a storm of burning sulfur, it's a voyage in search of Sodom and Gomorrah. sea and the lands around it are at the heart of the Bible story. King Saul camped here in the clifftop caves as he hunted his rival David, the slayer of Goliath. On the road from Jerusalem to Jericho, maybe Jesus himself once walked here. Mike Sanders is a biblical scholar with a lifelong quest to penetrate the myths of time and find solid evidence for the events described in the Bible. The fate of Sodom and Gomorrah has always fascinated him. These two the cities were the epitome of evil in the world at that time. And in spite of Abraham actually negotiating with God to save the cities, God in the biblical story decides to destroy them by a fire and brimstone. This punishment has made Sodom and Gomorrah bywords for sin, lechery, and sexual perversion. But for cities so notorious, Sodom and Gomorrah are notoriously difficult to locate. The biblical story, however, is absolutely clear that they were to the north of Jerusalem. But in spite of extensive excavation in this area, not a trace has ever been found. So archaeologists widened the search, and where better to look for two dead cities than beside a lifeless sea? Many people believe that Sodom and Gomorrah, if they exist, exist at the edge of the Dead Sea. But the cities have never been found. The cities seem determined to hide their shame from history, but then Sanders found a clue not from antiquity, but from much more recent times. There are maps that are actually published in 1650 showing Sodom and Gomorrah beneath the Dead Sea. What would a 17th century map maker know about the true location of Sodom and Gomorrah? It seemed simply a flight of artistic fancy until apparent confirmation came from an unexpected and totally modern source. Three. Space Shuttle Endeavour set off on a mission to photograph the Earth from space. The latest radar technology can reveal features invisible to the human eye. 
the scientists were looking for information on minerals, vegetation, and the use of fresh water. They never imagined that photographs from space could throw new light on the fate of Sodom and Gomorrah. According to the received wisdom of geology, the bottom of the Dead Sea should be completely flat. But according to the shots from space, it wasn't. My first reaction when I saw the NASA photographs was that this was something unique and startling. There were a whole series of strange features that shouldn't be there, which we call anomalies. One is a rectangle of dots which appear too regular to be natural formations. The other is a feature that looks like a collapsed pyramid. All the experts that we've talked to, who are geologists, have told us that there is no similar natural formation like that anywhere else in the world. And the implication, if it's not a natural formation, is that it may, it may be man-made. The Dead Sea, for the first time in eternity, had hinted at a guilty secret beneath its acrid waves. Mike Sanders knew he couldn't rest until he'd gone where no man had been for thousands of years back to Sodom and Gomorrah. There's only one way to find out the, uh, the true answer. We have to take a submarine and look. Mike contacted me about a year ago and uh, he said, would you like to go diving in the Dead Sea? After his initial shock, laughter, obviously thinking he had a nutter on the phone. Uh, he said, The Red Sea? I've always wanted to go to the Red Sea. And he said, No, the Dead Sea. I said, I don't think anyone's ever dove in the Dead Sea. And he said, That's right. I think he said, I'll get back to you. I'm sure it started to check me out to see if I was, wasn't completely mad. He said, Well, there must be reasons why no one's ever dove there. So, uh, yeah, I'd like to go. That sounds pretty neat. So. Let's do it. The mini submarine Delta holds two people, a pilot and an observer. Hey, it looks pretty good. All right, looks like it survived the trip. The Delta has made over 5,000 dives and has a 100% safety record. But as it leaves Jerusalem, it faces its most testing mission, one which doesn't have the automatic blessing of the powers that be. It's okay, a couple of nutters deciding we want to take a submarine to the bottom of the Dead Sea, but there are governments involved and there is money involved and neither uh, were easily persuaded As the Delta approaches the Dead Sea, a military checkpoint reminds the mission that it's not just underwater hazards they face. There are political and security obstacles to get around. After two years of negotiation with the Israelis, Jordanians and Palestinians, Sanders has only been granted a limited amount of time for diving. Every moment and every dive will be critical. Over 1,300 feet below sea level, the Dead Sea is the lowest point on Earth. The seawater is more than 30% salt, with minerals so concentrated that practically nothing can live in it. The Dead Sea embalms and encases everything that enters it in a crust of salt. This buildup on a ship's hull took only two weeks to form. The minerals make the water much heavier. As a result, under the surface, the pressure is between two and three times that of normal water. This has dangerous implications for the delta. Over the coming week, as the submarine dives to the bottom of the sea, its hull will be tested right to the limit. Could it also be tested to destruction? It's a deadly gamble, 
but there'll be only one way to find out. Both feet together. There you go. You can see him right here. <laughs> We're going to lunch. We'll see you a little later. <laughs> Better let him out. How you like it? It's all right. Yeah. Does it get hotter than this? Well, it depends on the water temperature. It's uh, It should be cooler than it is in there now. This thing's been warm. heating up in the sun. Yeah, it's kind of like an oven. No, you don't want to stay in there at that temperature very long. And there's no air either, is there? There will be air. Yeah. It'll circulate air when it's so, running. So that's the worst it's going to get? Absolutely. Already one day behind schedule, Mike has another headache. Delta normally dives with backup from some of the most advanced research ships in the world. Here at the Dead Sea, former Israeli SAS captain Moti Ghanin and his men are having to prepare the submarine support barge out of parts cannibalized from anything at hand. Untested, these primitive fittings will have to operate perfectly if the submarine has any hope of surviving these heavy and hostile waters. The final member to join the dive team is scientist Zvi Ben Avraham. As director of the Dead Sea Research Center, Zvi has studied these waters for more than 20 years and knows more about their strange qualities than anyone else. One of the unique properties of the Dead Sea is that it hardly has any oxygen. And because you have no oxygen, you have no corrosion, no rust, no nothing. And this is a very good example. Just look on this pile just under the water level. Very clean, and it can stay clean for tens of years. Above the water, you see how much it's rusty. So, in short, you want to keep something, put it in the Dead Sea. The Dead Sea has a unique attraction for tourists. Because the water contains 10 times more salt than normal seawater, it provides an almost surreal buoyancy. In fact, it is almost impossible for a swimmer to sink fun for the bathers, but for a vessel whose entire purpose is to go beneath the waves, something of a disadvantage. The biggest part about diving in the Dead Sea, really, uh, for us, that's different than where we usually dive is the high salinity. And that's gonna, gonna mean that we're gonna have to add about uh, 1,300 pounds of lead to the submarine. The first time we put the sub underwater, what we'll do is we'll leave it attached to the crane and we'll lower it into the water and we'll see how the sub wants to sink while it's still connected to the crane. That way it, uh, it won't sink down and not be able to come back up. In spite of an extra load of over a thousand pounds of lead, the submarine barely sinks enough to cover the deck. It's too light. We've got to get more weight in it. It needs a lot of lead. What? That was close. I didn't have breakfast. We'll just keep putting it in until it sinks. It's got over 1,200 pounds in it now. Word quickly gets around the bobbing bathers of a new attraction, the submarine that refuses to sink. You can see the salt on it already glistening. Taking a lot more weight than we thought it would. Finally, the delta we sinks under it. the water. Yeah, so it's about 100 pounds difference between salt water and fresh water. Here, we're putting in over 1,300 pounds to get it under. That's a heck of a difference. With the buoyancy set, Rich feels confident about setting the sub free from the safety of the barge for the first time.
gingerly, the sub makes a tour of the support vessel. It's like a little toy, toy boat in the But it will do, it will do amazing things. We've been worried for months whether this would work or not, and we proved that we can dive in the Dead Sea. The visibility's not bad, we can see good enough. It's, 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 uh, it should be all right, and most of it's flat enough, the sonar should work well, so if there's targets out there, I think we'll find them. Now we can find the truth. Well, Whatever it is, nothing there, okay, there's nothing there. If there are two tells in Sodom and Gomorrah there, okay. If we find wrecks, wonderful. If we don't find anything, that's the truth. That's the truth too. And it's important, it's important that people know always the truth. citizens of Sodom and Gomorrah to mend their ways or face the consequences. When he saw that the people were ignoring his warning, in his wrath he wrought a terrible revenge on their disobedience. But in the thousands of years since that cataclysmic event, no one has found any evidence for the cities. So was the Old Testament account just a fable, an old-fashioned morality story? Father Innocent, the priest at St. George's Madaba on the Jordanian side of the Dead Sea, has no doubts about the story's literal truth. Of course it did happen. What really matters for us Christians, it is that there has happened something which was considered to be the punishment from the Lord. Whether you believe it or not, it's up to you. But we as Christians, yes, we believe and we accept the whole of the Bible. The present stage of archaeology suggests that none of the events in the Old Testament are true. Uh, and yet, the Old Testament is written as a history. Scholars who look at it suggest that it is a historical work, and yet there's no historical evidence. It doesn't seem to make any sense whatsoever. The moment of truth has arrived. Today, the Delta will travel to a place never before seen by man, except perhaps by those who perished in a storm of brimstone. The dive team have chosen to explore the anomaly which appeared as a rectangle of dots on the NASA photograph. For Mike Sanders, the prospect of diving to the lowest place on the planet has set the nerves jangling. I'm scared. I mean, this is not something that I'd like to do, and I'm very apprehensive. If you ask me would I go down in a submarine like the Delta anywhere else in the world at any time, the answer is not for one million or even ten million dollars. I'm going down because we have seen the anomalies and I have to do it. I'm not going down because I like to do it, want to do it, or would do it anywhere else for any amount of money at any time, anywhere. Okay, Michael. Best thing is to stand up on the deck. You want to go in both feet together. Yeah, we'll take your shoes off. Even in the supposed safety of a submarine, diving can be a deadly game. Thirty years ago, Rich Slater had to escape from a crippled submarine. In the process, he set the world record for an ascent from deep water without an aqualung. 
It took him two minutes to reach the surface from over 225 feet right. down. The experience took him to the very brink of death. All right, here we go. Let's do it. You got it? See you later. Are they closing the hatch? They've scaled Everest. They've been to the North Pole. They've been to the moon. They've sent spaceships to Mars. Nobody has ever been to the bottom of the Dead Sea. Okay, welcome to Delta Dive 5033. I'm waiting. First dive in a submarine, and we're almost underwater. We are underwater. Engines on. It's quite murky, but there's this interesting little side effects. Do you know how deep we are at this point? 100 feet. But what happens? Do, do we gently hit the bottom or do you stop it? Oh no, we crash. We crash? Oh yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, it, it just sits down. It would be a slight crunch of salt. So we're just gently sinking down? Yeah, it's like a balloon. Two hundred feet. My lord, look at that. On the safe floor, two, two, zero. Roger that. Congratulations on being in the Dead Sea sea floor. It's pretty beautiful down here. It's all salt and we get a lot of glitter. It looks like ice. It's really quite spectacular. Roger that. But it is amazingly flat. Everywhere is flat. Like somebody took a giant salt shaker and just layered, laid salt on everything. Everything. Up on the surface, Rich Slater's son, Dave, is monitoring the sub's progress and using the latest satellite guidance system to help it home in on the mysterious anomaly. Core setting of 250 looks good. And we are tracking, no problems. Okay, let's go look around. Cool. Deep in inner space, they're now about 200 meters from the site of the mysterious feature spotted by NASA's cameras. Roger, 20 degrees to the right. 30 meters to the target. Right now, you're right on the anomaly. Roger that. Okay, we're supposed to go. The, the no features at all. It looks like the salt just covers everything. Yes, as far as the eye can see, and no bumps. I mean, it's it's flat. So there's no structures here of any. No structures at all. 
Roger that. Roger. In spite of finding nothing at the site of the first anomaly, the dive team can still claim their place in diving history. They're the first people to dive to the bottom of the Dead Sea. They have also achieved a scientific first, confirming that the seafloor is as flat as the experts predicted. Finding any features here at all would be a major discovery. With all systems operational, the search for Sodom and Gomorrah can begin. Recent discoveries on the Jordanian side of the Dead Sea have revealed evidence which supports the biblical account of the destruction of the twin cities of evil. In this, one of the largest cemeteries ever built on Earth, archaeologists have discovered tens of thousands of ancient graves. What's more, the bones from these graves date from the Old Testament era, and some of them show unusual signs of having been burnt at the time of death. Could these be the remains of the ill-fated citizens of Sodom and Gomorrah, burnt by the biblical cataract of fire? Nearby, another clue supports the Old Testament story. Embedded in these strange cliffs are balls of almost pure sulfur, or to give it the old-fashioned name, brimstone. Balls of brimstone, hundreds of thousands dead, burnt bones. The forensic evidence mounts that the events described in the Bible may have some foundation in fact. But scientific studies of the geology of the region suggest that God's fury may not have been the only reason for these strange phenomena. The Dead Sea Valley lies on a major seismic fault. The area has a long history of earthquake activity. A large earthquake would have caused massive upheavals in the area, with eruptions throwing molten rock and ash high up into the sky. By raising the land at one end of the Dead Sea, the earthquake could also have caused extensive flooding over the flat northern end of the valley, drowning anything that was built there, including the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. The shore on the Israeli side of the Dead Sea also has its relics, but telling a different story of destruction. The ruins of this restaurant stand as a memorial to the 1973 conflict between Israel and Jordan. It's an irony that one of the few things to survive in this modern ruin is a depiction of the ancient fate of Sodom and Gomorrah. Although the fighting is long past, the Dead Sea is still a military zone, and the border between Israel and Jordan now runs straight down the center of the sea. The dive team are now within 300 meters of the border, where they plan to explore the second and final anomaly. At the site of their first dive, they found nothing of the features spotted from outer space. All the team's hopes of finding Sodom and Gomorrah are riding on this new site. But politics and security set strict limits to their curiosity. The target site straddles the underwater border. At the last moment, the Jordanian government withdraw permission for any diving in their territory. The team, now joined by marine archaeologist Pia Anderson, 
weigh the risks of going ahead and exploring the forbidden area anyway. Nobody walk. Yeah, you don't want to go This is no man's land. But it may be what you've seen the first time that anybody's seen. That's right. Because the people are not coming here. That's why don't I think it's a good idea to go look. Be mine. No, no, seriously, don't step on it. This is, this don't go ashore. If, no. No, if no mind, they will shoot you from there. Stop. Shooting, I'm, I'm used to. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's, it's water, if, I don't like. But if you see something, it could be that nobody's seen before. This is right. Would it be okay to come over here? I don't know. I think it's alright if you stay in the boat. Oh, stay in the boat. Yeah, we'll stay in the boat. I'm, I'm not fine with it. They decide to try to explore the anomaly while staying on the Israeli side of the border. Good luck, Z. Okay. Okay, you can uh, start up. You're about 200 yards from the boat. Uh, about 100 feet of water depth here in the Dead Sea. With wow, Z. my goodness. <laughs> Great. Yeah, you finally made it. You've been finally studying this it. place for a long time, it's right? Unbelievable story. Unbelievable story. Look at that. Yeah, good. This is the Israeli Jordan border. Using the satellite tracking system, Mike and Rich can plot the submarine's movements to within a few meters. Something is going on here. I guess you have to go to the right. Let's investigate this feature. It's very interesting. Although the seabed nearby is flat, Zvi has seen something on his sonar screen. Something quite extraordinary. Okay, so we are going to these funny features on the sonar. Oh, it's another 50 meter or so? Yes. Okay. Let's see what they are. But in their enthusiasm, Zvi and Dave in the Delta are getting dangerously close to the border. As the support ship follows, Moti, the captain, begins to get anxious about everyone's safety. Turn, turn to the right. More to the right. Roger that. That's it, that's it. More, 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 more. Okay, David, look at this. Hold on, wait, wait. We're already going to go. Okay, so let's go. Let's go. Wow! After nothing but flat, featureless seabed, Zvi has found something quite inexplicable. But the action isn't all underwater. On the surface, the sub's activities have sparked a full-scale international incident. Uh, the Israeli army said that we uh, cross the border because of a, a complaint of the Jordanian soldiers. But we are on the border. We just uh, cross maybe a few hundred meters because of the sub. It's uh, underwater and they, we have to follow the sub. Zavi is uh, indicating that he has not seen these particular structures before. Uh, I don't know what they are. Never seen them before. Does he think they might be uh, uh, man-made or, or not natural? I don't know. Oh, uh, that's inconclusive at this time. I'll investigate a little further. Chris has heard from Moti that the submarine has now strayed far over the undersea border. The Jordanians are insisting that it surfaces at once. I just don't believe it. I don't believe what I see. I, I really don't believe what I see. The 
This is amazing what's going on here. Chief Lee says that we got to get you up, so uh, prepare the surface. We are moving to the west because I don't want them, uh, I don't want to disturb the peace. That's it. I'm not one to believe in uh, conspiracy theories, but uh, four or five days ago, uh, in the middle of the Dead Sea, for the first time that I know of, the Israeli army stroke navy decided to uh, make a massive explosion causing 4.2 on the Richter scale, knowing full well that within a few days we are going to take the sub down there. Um, Far be it for me to uh, ascribe peculiar motives to the Israeli Defense Forces, but one does wonder that perhaps they had something that they didn't want us to find, something to hide. Uh, I hope it isn't our anomalies, but we will find out. Forced to abort the mission on the very brink of a breakthrough, the team are impatient to go back to the area and dive again. Mike is convinced that at last, Zvi may have found the ruins of the ancient cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. But adding to Mike's frustration, Zvi has a scientist's reluctance to speculate. Could it have been man-made? I don't know. It's no, could, it, could it have been man-made? It's not a natural process. I, what, I did not say not a natural process. I say I don't know. know. Okay. I don't know of a natural. So process. you don't know. Maybe when... there are natural processes that I don't know of. Sure. But you've never seen anything like I that never before. Seen that one. Either on land or under the sea. Um, on land, it's difficult to say because on land, you know, at sea, I did not see this. And and I investigated that sea for many years. But it could be mine. The plan for the next dive is for Zvi to investigate further the site of the pyramid anomaly. This time he's under firm instructions. No trespassing over the underwater frontier with Jordan. We see fairly large structures here. Um, we're taking pictures. Roger, can you uh, say a little more about it? It has some sharp edges. There are sharp edges. And fairly steep uh, fairly walls. Fairly steep walls on these mounds. I mean, they have a deposit of salt encrusting them. It's a remarkable find. Is the presence of sharp edges a sign of something artificial, a work of human hands? Back on the surface, the southerly wind is picking up. Moti is beginning to worry. It's a barge, and it starts uh, to get uh, wet. The waves can climb on it and to, to flash it, to wash everything, like electricity, generator, things like that. We can have damage. Can we use your arm to... Certainly. To try That's a to, good idea, actually. To break one of these? Mm -hmm. Oblivious to the concerns on the surface, Zvi is eager to find out if these salt cake structures concealed the ruins of the Bible cities of sin. The density of the Dead Sea water means that in spite of their relatively tame appearance, each wave carries the power of a wave three times its size. Better for us if in this case we see that the sea is too rough, better if we will go to a shelter near and close the shore. What's up? We better call him up. Modi said the weather's coming in. He wants to get the sub back on board. Dave, uh, the weather's changing up here. We're going to have to bring you up in a few minutes. So if you have anything to do, do it quickly. Well, it sure doesn't look that bad, does it? I, I have to think we have to trust the locals here. It's starting to blow a little southerly. I think that's what he's worried about. 
Zvi does his best to get a sample, but the sub's light grappling arm just isn't designed for this job. Don't move, don't move. Don't do you gotta get your up, so uh Okay. Zvi ah. seems to be plagued with bad luck. Once again, his dive has had to be abandoned. What's worse, this time he knows he was within inches of an extraordinary discovery. And worse still, he's baffled by exactly what it was. No, I don't know what that's like. I don't know, just... No, what, I, nobody knows anything what they are. What do you think they are? Now maybe, maybe tectonics, four things that I don't know. I am a this tectonic is, man. This I am a tectonic is, man. There's a square of walls and it's a tectonic man. I see a series of faults that uh, activate. This is an active area. This the, is a, the, si the size of a uh, of, of a barge. A barge yeah, side of a barge. Maybe we have one set of four here, another set of right. That's it. Natural phenomenon. We will have a beer. Moti's really worried now. He's called for the team to evacuate the barge, but even back on board the ship, there's potential disaster all around. That become quite dangerous. So we are trying to tow the barge and the sub, but the waves are moving faster in that direction than he can pull in that direction, so we're stuck. We can't move forward. There is a danger we're actually moving backwards towards the shore, which is not a good idea because that area that we just come from is in fact mined, and the last thing on earth we want to have happen is to be washed ashore on that particular part of the the Dead Sea. So it looks as though uh, the dives for the day are over, unfortunately, just when uh, Zvi had evidently found some uh, structure. These mounds that uh, seem to be, some of them seem to be aligned on straight lines. Now, um, I don't know what is the actual extent of these mounds. But they are not very widespread. We don't know how far they go to the east because we were not allowed to cross to the Jordan territory. But uh, from our side, from the Israeli side, you can see that this is quite limited extent. I don't know what are these mounds. I don't know what process creates them, but they sort of funny features. Last day of the expedition. With two dives planned, Mike has gone down to seize these inexplicable structures for himself. I want to see anomalies. What the oh, his, wait a minute, hold on. What the hell is that? There we are. Mounds and more mounds and even more mounds that is quite stupendous hmm. on the left hand side there's a sort of bigger mound something's happened, the whole bottom looks different here yes it does it looks as though there's something underneath this, as opposed to the rest of the area where it was all flat. Are these the ruins of the ancient cities of Sin, or simply silt from the river feeding the sea? Could, could it be rubbish coming in from the Jordan? Yeah, but why would it all be in one spot? Well, that's I what... I think the rubbish should be all over the place. Absolutely. Makes no sense. No. The fact that the mounds are concentrated in one area adds to Mike's excitement. These must surely be the salt-encrusted ruins of an ancient settlement. A 
And before long, there's another startling and inexplicable discovery. Here's a big one. Here's a big one, yeah. Big one. And there's red stuff on oh, top. Has anybody seen any of the red stuff on flat no. terrain? No. Ah. Oh, we've come across some uh, fairly large mounds. The mounds are about a half a meter to a meter high. They're covered with salt with red coloration at the top. Over. Roger. Planning to investigate the phenomenon of the red material on the final dive, Mike returns to the surface. If they were natural features, you would expect to see all sorts, large quantities of them all over the place. And they're not. They're, they're localized. Um, and they do have this red stuff on top of them. And it's just, it's just amazing. And there is no red stuff anywhere else. With only two hours left before nightfall, Mike is keen to dive again. But whatever is down there is jealous of its secrets. The tow rope has become snagged in the propeller. In a desperate effort to rescue the final dive, Odette, one of the boat crew, dives into the corrosive waters with no protection. If they can't free the rope, it'll be too dark to dive and too late for Mike to find the truth about those tantalizing seabed structures. After an eternity, Odette emerges triumphant. The final dive can go ahead. Here's a big one. Here's a big one, yeah. Big one. the stuff again on big, top. This is as big as the submarine, this one. You see the red on top? Yes. The red tops on the mounds continue to puzzle the crew. No one can think of any natural explanation. The exploration goes on until the last possible minute. But without proper excavation tools or permission to cross into Jordanian waters, Mike can only make a limited survey of the site. We found an area with some the team large know mounds. that they've made an astonishing discovery, maybe even a discovery of epic historical importance. But quite what it is they've discovered, they still don't know. What they do know is that it'll take a larger, more sophisticated expedition to find the truth. Sander's dream is still alive. He's sure that the secrets locked beneath the hardened salt will still be there when he returns. After thousands of years, Sodom can wait a little longer, and Gomorrah is another day.